My stepmom tried to replace my late mom and control my life, but when they asked Maine to break up with my girlfriend for my stepbrother, I finally walked away. I, male, 32, have been NC with my dad's family for the last 12 years, and it all stems from his remarriage. My parents split up when I was about 10 or so because they fell out of love. While at the age of 32 I understand what that means, I was kind of shocked and heartbroken about it as a kid. Due to that, I ended up lashing out at my parents a lot, and we went to family counseling together. However, it really only felt like my mom was the one putting in efforts to get to understand my POV while dad had a hard-ass stance of accepting life as it comes to you. Because of that, I was much closer to my mom than my dad and only ever stayed with him for a few months at a time. However, when I was 14, mom passed away in an accident and I was forced to move in with dad. Those days were probably the worst time of my life and it felt even worse because I was basically the only one grieving. My dad had been dating this woman, Beth, female, 49, for a few years and they had gotten engaged at the same time frame as mom's passing. Dad prioritized his future with Beth over respecting mom and their shared past and thus never showed any outward signs of sadness or grief, making me even more isolated as a teenager. Beth, too, was a handful during this time since I was an unexpected arrival in their household. She expected me to play by her rules and also tried to take over as the maternal figure for me. I was obviously resistant to this because it's not like she could replace my mom in the span of a few months. Even worse, she always favored her son, Josh, male, 30, from a previous relationship. In the classic overbearing parent style, she tried to meddle and get him a better spot in the football team, a better part in the school play and all that jazz. Josh, to his credit, usually called his mom out for all of this behavior, but she still acted like a smother regardless. And no matter how red-faced he got by her antics, he still reaped the benefits that his mom's string pulling provided. So my teen years were pretty rough, dealing with the loss of my mom, my whip dad who never said a word against Beth, and a pretty distant step bro, who was always a little awkward around me. All I knew was that I'd keep my head down and move out after college was over. I ended up going to UNC, which was in my home state, and to save money, stayed with my dad and his family. This was something that both Dad and Beth had agreed to, and it's not like I was freeloading. I paid nominal rent and used to help out with groceries. However, things got really tense after I started dating this girl, Laura, female 31 right now, during my college years. I used to bring her home often, and she had been introduced to the family and it was clear that Josh had a thing for her. I didn't like this and had told him in private to stop acting like a creep around Laura, but it was clear that he still had feelings for her. Now I thought it was a crush and that it would pass, but this dude had fallen hard. He was dropping his grades in school, messing up his sap prep, and just acting like a lovesick puppy in general. But to be honest, it wasn't my problem. I had tried to be the responsible elder brother and stop calling my girlfriend over and gritting my teeth over the fact that he was infatuated with my girlfriend and making no effort to hide it. He didn't get it though, and he probably didn't want to. From what I know now, Beth had checked in with her son due to his weird behavior, and he'd spilled all his lady troubles to her. Beth, through some mental gymnastics of her own, had decided that I was to blame for Josh's situation and told my dad to deliver an ultimatum to me. However, back then, I was completely blindsided by my dad sitting me down one day and saying, Son, we had agreed that you would stay with us during your college years, but something has come up. Beth and I feel like you're distracting Josh with your activities and friends that you bring over and because of that we need to come to a new agreement. When I heard this from him, I got really confused. Not knowing the context, I thought he might have been referring to my friends that came over to play games on my Wii every now and then, or perhaps I was being too loud at night with music. I had no idea and I asked him, what do you mean dad, are my friends being a bad influence on Josh? I swear we haven't taught him anything wrong and most of the time we stay out of each other's way, right? He replied, yeah, but that's not what I'm talking about, RP. I think that you and I both know that Josh has strong feelings for Laura. What we were thinking is, maybe you could break up with her to keep peace in the family. I mean, we don't think that a girl should mean more than your brother's well-being, right? I laughed out loud when I heard this. It was by far the dumbest thing I had ever heard in my life. Still chuckling, I went, sure, Dad. Why don't I break up an amazing relationship because your kid doesn't know how to take no for an answer? I've already told him tons of times that he makes Laura uncomfortable and I barely bring her over anymore. What is the problem anyways? I knew he was beating around the bush, but I was starting to realize that Josh had gone all gung-ho with the if I can't have her, nobody can attitude and Beth had probably asked dad to talk to me about it to appease her son and also make sure he doesn't waste any more time over this girl. I have no clue how they expected me to roll over on this though. 
It blew up into a huge fight and I ended up choosing to stick with Laura and move out of the house. I packed my bags one day and left, changing my cell number in the process too. I crashed at a friend's place for a few days and eventually moved in with my girlfriend. Thankfully, I was in college on scholarship and my main struggles came from paying for rent and utilities, but I hustled and worked nights to make it happen. At this point, all bridges had been burned with my family, and the only people I consider family currently are a few relatives on my mom's side. It's been 12 years since then, and guess what? Laura and I got married and both of us are quite comfortable in our jobs and lives. In fact, we bought our first house and are trying for a baby. I genuinely think leaving my toxic family behind was the best decision I made. However, a couple of days ago, someone showed up at my doorstep, and that made me spiral and think back to my past a little. Josh somehow found out where I lived and came over to visit one day, saying that he needs to talk to me. I was too shocked to really react and silently let him in. After he made himself comfortable, we caught up a little, although he already knew the general gist of my life because he had apparently found out through social media. Then, he told me the real reason he was here. He explained a lot of things about his infatuation with Laura, including his mom's involvement. However, he also added that he never wanted me to move out of the house, and that was something that Beth had devised all on her own. He said that his stepdad and mom seemed almost glad that I was gone, and the house became really cold and weird after that for him. The three of them ended up moving out of state a few months after I left, something which I wasn't aware of and Josh didn't know how to reach out to me back then. In all this time, he had been feeling guilty for the way I had left and had gotten over his infatuation with Laura, surprise, surprise, but due to his shitty mental state, had ended up mixing with the wrong crowd in college and ended up dropping out. The situation at home was terrible as well and his mother was losing her mind over his lack of drive and success without ever really bothering to find out why he was feeling so depressed. This eventually drove him to leave the house after 10 years back and he's been wandering the states working random odd jobs and hitchhiking. He came to me to ask if I wouldn't help him out by settling in this town, perhaps by helping him get a foot in the door at the place I work at. For someone with no degree and no qualifications, this would be tough and I made that clear, but Josh said that I owe him this for abandoning him with our toxic family. He claims that even though we were distant, we were still brothers. He left about an hour back as I'm writing this post and I'm torn. I don't think I owe him any obligation, but it's terrible to see him like this. I spoke to Laura about it, and she would prefer staying NC with all members of my family, including Josh, but feels like we should help him out in some way at least. Wibta if I don't continue interacting with my stepbrother. After reading everybody's comments, I think the best course of action is to give Josh some money to live in a cheap apartment for a few months and ask him to begin looking for a job himself. I don't know whether we will ever have a real bond, but you guys are right. I don't owe him anything for his own emotional turmoil. I did what was best for me. It's been a few months since my last update and Josh is doing quite well in our town. He's changed a lot from who he was previously and started work as a junior manager in a local Walmart. The money we gave him has been beneficial and he's going to night school to get a degree. I'll be honest, seeing him now makes me want to be more involved in his life. But I can't really get over the fact that he thinks I owe him something for moving out and making him feel guilty. I spoke to my relatives about it, and they suggested having a confrontation with him. I ended up speaking to Josh about why I think he's wrong to expect something from me, but I do think he is a fine man now and deserves some love from me. It took him some time to get the nuance, but he's apologized for the unfair burden and is thankful for the help. Laura has softened up to him since he has apologized to her privately as well for his creepy behavior in the past. I think that he's going to be welcome in our house from now on. Can't say the same for his mom and my dad, though lolll. We both hate their guts. Neither is Josh, RN. Yeah, he was one for being obsessed with Laura, but the real AH is Beth for enabling that kind of behavior. NTA, but I would still be careful around your brother. Not because he's doing anything wrong, but because both of you need to work together to process the trauma of your narcissistic parents. I also feel like someone like Beth isn't easy to cut off. So is Josh North Carolina with them right now? My father found out that my mother had an affair many years ago with his brother when they were still together. My father became suspicious and pressured all his children to take a DNA test. I was the only one of the four who was not biological. This screwed up my relationship with my father. I visited him every weekend and after the test results, he cut the visits. He always gave some money for his children, but for me he only gave what he was obliged by law to do. All of my brothers got a car and a trip to another country, gift divided in half by my parents, and I only got trip because that's what my mother managed on her own. It hurt to see my brother, one year younger, win everything. From one month to the next, I lost a loving, 
present and helpful father, and every time I pointed this out, he told me to understand how hard it was for him to see the fruit of my mother's betrayal and to see that she lied to him for years, taking advantage of the similarity between him and his brother. For over five years, he barely spoke to me beyond the basics and excluded me from everything parties. It hurt a lot. After five years under the influence of my stepmother, he had more contact with me, but we were no longer the same. Our relationship has always been rocky after that. The situation. I'm getting married to my beautiful bride in a few months and we're getting ready for the ceremony party. My father insisted on giving a value high to help, and although I didn't want to, I ended up accepting it as long as there was no charge from him. Somehow, I think one of my brothers, he found out he wouldn't walk me down the aisle, and he had a meltdown. He said that this was our moment as we planned it when I was younger, and that it was his dream to walk his only daughter down the aisle. At some point, he talked about helping out at the party, which was the trigger. I said he forfeited that right by setting me aside for five years for something I wasn't guilty of, so I preferred to go alone. He again began to say that I should understand his feeling, and that it was a very difficult time for him, and that he accepted me. I exploded, saying that I didn't give a shit about his feelings, because he just ignored that he raised me for 17 years and treated me like it was an obligation. He looked shocked, and he left. My stepmother called me later, saying that I broke my father's heart doing, and saying all this, and that he is human, he can make mistakes, and that he was trying his best to make up for the lost time. Ada. Extra. No, I didn't want to have contact with my uncle, father, because I never met him, and I never felt the need. Because he knew he was my father, he and my father fought, and he never wanted to have contact with me. We followed each other on social media. For those who are asking about my mother, and if she's going to the wedding, she passed away three years ago, so I don't think this aspect makes any difference. She'll have a seat in her honor, because I want to. And that's it. NTA. Everyone is so worried about your dad's feelings. Well, what about what he did to a child? He abandoned you, and everyone wants you to say, whoops, it was a mistake, and my feelings were hurt by your mother. No, he has no concept of how much he hurt you. He didn't put you first, he put himself first, and now he wants you to put him first, probably just for appearance's sake. Walk down the aisle by yourself and do it proudly. NTA. Your father took out his feelings of betrayal on an innocent child. That's on him. Also, congratulations on your upcoming marriage. Next story. A friend wanted to visit my house, so we made plans for them to visit my place for a sleepover. It was just a casual thing we do every so often. In fact, they live a bike ride away, very close by. They were to get here after lunch, and at 1 p.m. I got a message saying they just woke up, followed by them saying they'll do some chores first. I said, sure, I'm just home anyway. What's an hour or so between friends? 4 p.m. They said they'll arrive around 6 to 7 p.m., and by that point, I was already upset, since it took four hours for them to say they'd be here even later. I thought I could be patient. But no, I was already getting hungry for dinner, and at 6 p.m. they still weren't here. So I told them we should just cancel this whole sleepover. I said to them I was upset, and I didn't want to take it out on them, so I would like space to just process my feelings. Their reply was, Oh, I already packed. Am I the a-hole for canceling the sleepover to process how upset it made me they were six hours late? Update. 962022. They pushed me through with the call. By that I mean they asked to call me earlier. They took a while. But they were able to in the end. They explained to me what happened. They assumed that it would be okay to wait four hours. Because I was just at my place. And okay to wait for two more for their ride to get them. I explained how it made me feel. Why that made me feel that way. And what I would like to be done. They didn't realize they were being selfish and inconsiderate. They genuinely said sorry, said they'll avoid it happening again. Actually, I think I should fix this. I might have done this to my brother once too and asked me what they could do in the future in case they take a long time in something again. I said to keep me posted and text me regularly at least, because I don't know what was happening in those six hours. Maybe they were having an emergency. Maybe they were practicing the marimba. I don't know. NTA. Your friend was very rude. It also strikes me as pretty insulting that they'd rather be at home and working than keep a date with a friend. I'd be questioning the friendship if I learned I ranked lower than doing the laundry. Your NTA for taking space to avoid blowing up on them, but you'd be an ah to yourself if you keep letting this person treat you like an afterthought. You should calmly confront them about their inconsiderate behavior. NTA. A hour or so late isn't a big deal between close friends, but six hours is beyond absurd, especially without advance warning and an explanation. If they'd contacted you before the time you were originally supposed to meet up and told you why they'd be delayed, and when they'd be there, and then actually showed up at that time, it would be different. 
But six hours without a good reason is just selfish, and in my opinion, doing chores they should have had finished beforehand, and that probably don't take six hours to complete, is not a good reason. No offense, but this screams selfishness and entitlement. Has your friend ever given you the impression that they think they're better than you, or that you should be grateful for their friendship? I only ask because this really does sound to me like someone who expects you to be happy, to just wait around until the design arrives, and for them to not only not apologize but to make a joke about waiting until you're less grumpy, tells me they don't see anything wrong with what they did. You should really talk to this so-called friend of yours, and ask them why they think their time is more important than yours. I would want them to tell me exactly why they thought it would be okay to keep me waiting around all day, and then not apologize when I told them their actions had upset me. Frankly, they don't sound like a very good friend. Next story. Aida for calling out my sister's weird behavior around our family regarding her of. I F27 have a sister F26 who for the past three or so years has been doing OnlyFans content. Personally at first I didn't really care that she does of, but as she continues to push it in me in our family's face, and it's making us all very uncomfortable. She panders to a specific kink, bimbo fetish, which is essentially men getting off at women turning themselves into dramatically conventionally attractive sex dolls. Think of going from a plain Jane to the Kardashians times 10. For the past few years, we've seen her get extremely large boob jobs, BBLS, lip fillers, cheek fillers, cheek fillers, and basically every other plastic surgery under the sun. She can afford all these surgeries because she makes bank off this kink. I believe last year she told me she made over 80,000 just in a few months, and I bet the numbers have only increased since then. Okay, now to the problem. Seeing our sister not only look like a plastic sex doll, but talk about her of makes everyone in our family uncomfortable. But yesterday was the breaking point as it was also our mother's F-52 birthday. Our mother really disapproves of my sister's living, but she's never overtly said so, till now. When my sister went to cut the cake with our mom she made a weird joke about her breast getting in the way and everyone just went silent. She laughed it off and continued cutting while our mom just stared at her disappointingly. She walked out the room and cried, I've never seen my mom so despondent. When my sister asked what's wrong, our mom went off. She said lots of things but mainly that she's turned herself into a plastic hooker with no self-respect just for some cash, and that she lost all morality. She tried to defend herself but everyone has been sick of her weird comments like this. After them arguing back and forth I just pulled her out of the room and told her that mom's right. She's been making weird jokes comments about her of and surgeries for years and everyone's sick of it and wishes we can just go back to a normal family. She freaked out and called us all prudes who can't handle joke. She also implied that we must be jealous of all the money she makes. I just told her to go fuck off and stop being such a hypersexual weirdo. She stormed off and drove herself home that night. Later she texted me saying she doesn't see herself as my sister anymore, and same thing with our mom. I'm just sick of her and I'm sure the rest of the family is too. But just to be sure, am I the asshole for saying my sisters of work makes us all uncomfortable?